having me and Courtney. Um, hello to everybody all over. Um, <clears throat> I'm Dave Bennett, I'm a director for business development um, with a group of uh, subsidiaries of Atna. Um, I actually represent five subsidiaries within the Atna group of 19 subsidiaries. Um, and I sit in, uh, well, I'm physically in Renton, uh, which is a little suburb area of the Seattle, so basically Seattle area. So um, uh, that's where I'm sitting. Um, I will let Denise pipe in if she pops back in, but Denise works for me, um, works with me. Um, she is our OFA. I'll do a quick introduction for her. And like Courtney says, she sits up in Anchorage. Um, we're headquartered out of Anchorage. So um, Denise sits there. Um, my background, um, and I'll, I'll caveat to everyone asks us to say this, these, this is going to be my opinion and my experiences with, with CRM implementations. I don't necessarily represent the, um, the, the Atna, um, represent Atna or their perspective on implementation or CRM or sales or any particular one of the, the CRMs that are out there. Um, so my background um, with CRM started CRMs and implementation started back in 2004. Um, I worked for a company that had a system called SIS, Sales Information Systems. I don't know what exactly the platform was for it, but it was mostly a used as a gatekeeper for to track proposal costs. You could not book an award um, without a proposal number. And that proposal number was generated through that system. They did not use it for some of the amazing and fun things we can do with CRM systems when it was also 2004. And I think it was a DOS based system that had been modified for a Windows thing. And um, I think I still have bruises on my forehead from trying to make that system work. Um, uh, I also have worked on a very highly customized Deltec system, a company I worked for um, had programmers that worked with Deltec and basically programmed some additional backend stuff into their system. And it was really a highly designed system on a Deltec platform, um, specifically driven for the way they did business. Um, and it I worked I didn't do a lot of that sort of work, but I was highly involved in the beta testing and the, hey, we want this thing to do this from a user perspective, um, working with our developer group on that side of the house. And that was a really fun project and probably the most intimate with the back end of a system that I have ever gotten from a CRM standpoint. Um, I've also worked in a, with a with uh, Microsoft Dynamics, um, Salesforce, and um, here at Atna, we are implementing uh, CoSential um, as our, our CRM. Um, we started out with just using uh, an access database um, just to sort of capture some of our, our sales information um, and sort of figure out where we wanted to go. Um, the um, let me change my slides so I know what I'm talking about. Um, so with CRM implementation, it's really, in my mind, development and implementation are so intimately tied together that it may seem like I'm talking about development, but development and implementation are almost the same thing to an extent. And when you're working on that process, it's really sort of like, how do you eat an elephant? Um, you, you have to start with a plan, um, you know, a developed plan. And is that, are you starting from scratch or are you adapting uh, from old, something old to something new? Um, either way, you need to have a plan of attack. Um, uh, you need a broad team. Uh, you need operational management. You need finance and accounting. You need your business development folks. Um, everybody sort of has to get on board to sort of, because they all have a part of the end result of that in a, Everyone has their different perspective. They have different expectations. They have different um, uh, needs for the data. Um, so that plan sort of needs to incorporate all of those components and you, you need to be flexible and expect to change. You'll start down one road and find out that, you know, well, this doesn't meet someone's needs or they thought it was going to, you know, 
stand on its head and you know um it's not quite going to do that so you have to work to be able to be to incorporate that flexibility and that change and incorporate and try your best to address everyone's needs um uh you those expectations and what everybody's user you those users expectations really should be the basis for your your plan and what you want to do and where you start um is always the big question and my sort of my approach is in has sort of developed into the what do you need to do first what are your highest biggest needs sort of a maslow's hierarchy of needs um hit those things first and you're not you're going to have your opinion your finance and accounting going to have their so you have to sort of work with that user group to figure out what those first needs are and then build up from them um again work to find out what everyone's expectations are how how do they expect to use the CRM, um, who do they expect to be using those using the system within their organization? You know, your director of finance may not may have the input, but he's probably not the person who's going to be using it. Um, so you need to make sure you have that broad user group um, within those organizations and get a perspective of of how often they expect to be using it. Um, are they going to do they expect that they need to be in the system? every day do they expect to be in the system you know just to run reports once a month um and you sort of need to build their build your system around what their expectations and their needs are okay they're they're not going to be daily users so i don't need to develop pages or inputs around that but i need to be able to develop reports to extract what their expectations are um and then um data driven business decisions are always great but you got to make sure you have the good data and the garbage in garbage out model applies there but who's going to be using who's going to be using the system to get that data in and how you design the system to make sure that they're using it often enough to keep that data updated and maintained and that's really how you I feel that you ensure that you have good data in the system is by making the system easy and usable and common sense, which really means you need to adapt it to the way you do, your company does business and, and your users do business. Um, with that process, I think it's a constant sort of do loop of sort of beta testing, performance reviews, sort of engage your users um, find engaged users, find users who are really excited about the CRM and then find some reluctant users, some folks who don't want to, you know, who are just like Ugh, another system, um, but get them engaged because those are the folks that if you can get them to understand what you're doing and how you're doing it and make that system work for them, um, you'll, you'll find that maintaining and managing the data um, is a lot easier because, um, the reluctant users become less reluctant if you design something that works for them and is easy for them to use and understand and produces output that they want. Um, uh, and again, it's sort of like be willing to sort of change your ideas, um, understand what other folks need out of the system and continue to re review the expectations as you start to, we, we implement quite often in phases, um, continually review the expectations with that with the group and adapt um, to capture what other people need and what works for you and then i think you'll find a core group of people um, who will really help you make it work within all of those organizations with all the within all of those sort of stakeholders in the system and working with them um, is i think the the key component and then sort of that constant do loop of you know, checking in and um, uh, making sure what's coming out meets everyone's needs. So um, I sort of ranted there for a while. Does anyone I have any questions? I have sort of a crazy broad experience with the various systems and how they're implemented and why. And so does anyone have any comments or questions or input they want to provide? 
I'll out myself and say that I had to Google what do loop meant. So do you <laughs> just mean like do test do again? Yeah, or plan, kind of what plan, did you mean by that? Plan do test act plan do test act. Okay. Yeah, it, sorry, it's uh, it's that it's that do loop. It's you end up this constant cycle of you know well let's try this and then you implement it and see how it works and if it's not meeting those expectations you sort of you know revise the plan and you know re-implement um but we really have found that to be the issue with with the users that we expected to be in the system the number of users actually that's one of the things i've sort of learned from implementation across the board is from a business management perspective in an ideal world we'd have a whole lot more users active in the system all the time and that never seems to come to fruition in any crm implementation that i've ever been part of um you know you want to have your project managers and your finance people and everyone sort of like looking at the system on a regular basis. And we find that, you know, because they they hold that knowledge, you might find that you have to adopt how you you use the system where um, and Denise, if she I don't know if she's back on yet, we've we're finding that we're getting the information from them and we're the ones in the system much more often only because um, that's just the way it's become when i worked on that the dell tech system it was really designed around all these other user groups the finance and accounting and others and um they're just i don't know if there was not enough licenses or they didn't want to spend the time but there just weren't as many users in that system yet the expectations for being able to draw the data on what the pipeline looks like, revenue forecasting, and all that other stuff never changed. So we had to adapt how, who is doing what in the system, and how often um, to really be able to produce those those outputs. Um, and that was sort of a constant challenge. And I think that maybe um, something others experience. I'd love to have everybody in the CRM all the time, but it just doesn't seem to happen. Outside of marketing, have you guys given the keys to anybody? Um, we have given some uh, some looks under the hood um, and given access to a, a few folks. Um, our finance um, person um, has access. Um, she doesn't utilize it as much at the moment only because some of the features um relative to projects and stuff i don't we, we're we're not there as you know <laughs> our ftc isn't there yet and i think once we get some more of that in place but she did we did go through our planning process our revenue plan um in october for our last october for 2021 and she did sort of do some checking between what our operational directors had in that system versus and did some pre-population of their plans still using excel files for sort of developing their their revenue plans but she sort of did some pre-population with some of the data that was in there and did some checking so um and then we've got other folks um who have done some looks under the hood mostly because like as i said i mentioned I work for a group of five of the subsidiaries. Um, there are some other subsidiary groups that are interested. So we've even had some folks from within our organization, but from outside of our group that um, uh, kind of want to see what the system's all about. And um, that's been fun and interesting. Has anyone experienced anything abjectly different from what I've talked about? Have they? Um... I have a quick. I have a quick question for you. I think it's the million-dollar question for all of us who have ever been part of an implementation. If you had to do it all over again, like what would be the num? Like I wish I would have known this. I wish somebody would have told me this. There's a million of those, but like, what is maybe one or two that? 
is a must then since you've implemented a couple times? Um, I, I think it's, it's the making sure everyone has bought in up front. That to me is the million dollar question. Um, there's the, the closest I came was, was with that Dell tech system because that was really top down driven and people were, and, and they built it from the top down saying, this is what we want out of this thing. And how do you get it? And so as it worked down to the lower levels of, you know, to project managers and everything else, so they sort of then provided the input up. Um, and I think giving, having that voice at the t very top level of the organization uh, really helped design something to get to meet everyone's expectations and, and those decision-making. Um, we started this one, um, our system here sort of, um, and I, I last, uh, the conference with um, uh, the Central Conference last May, um, a uh, guy from uh, Sevenson, I think, did some implementation uh, lessons learned, and he mentioned that he started with Cosential from a knowledge management um, standpoint. He really wanted the project module and the staff modules to sort of help with proposals versus from a CRM data pipeline um, thing. And so they sort of went bottom up and we started that way as well um the decision to pick cosential started from that same point with us and um when i joined atna sort of adapted our approach to um really focus on the opportunity and revenue opportunity management and revenue projection side of the house and so the the stakeholder group sort of was different and the buy-in process was different. I, I think I would have preferred to have started from the having leadership know really what they wanted and then sort of define that down to everybody and then work to find the system. So um, did that answer your question, Natalie? Thanks. I had an old uh, CEO from um, a few jobs back and she used to always say people support what they help to create. And yeah. that's just always been something, you know, if people aren't involved in that creation process, they're, they're like, you're going to build this and you're just going to expect me to come in and, you know, use it like you say, you use it. And that doesn't usually go well. So anyways, that little saying always comes to mind. Yeah. And I think to help with that is making a system that design, working a system that meets their expectations really helps. And well, if you want me to do, to do this, it needs to do that. And if you can make that happen, um, and knowing what that is up front, saying, oh, no, you know, um, our contracts manager person um, does a lot of our administrative project setup stuff. And we're sort of really hoping that we can, when you book a opportunity in Cosential, that the data in there can actually produce that, you know, you go to publisher and produce a, a project setup thing. We, we haven't worked on that sort of thing yet, but that would make her life easier and might get the contracts group to engage a little bit more and a few other things, so. Which ideally all of that data then feeds into our project module and then our project data is better, but we're not there yet. <laughs> Baby steps. Yeah. Progress. Progress. Exactly. I just wrote that on the recap. I was like, um, on the use the do loop method on the do line, I said, roll it out. It's not, even if it's not perfect, progress over perfection. Yes, absolutely. Perfection is the devil of, or the enemy of, what, how's the word, of, of the good. And it's so much easier and better to take something that's not perfect and get people to buy into making it work for them um, rather than trying to think that it's perfect the first time. And then people get offended that, oh, someone else wants something else. Well, you know, where were they, where were they in that process? So I think being flexible and understanding that any input from a user is generally good input. 
<laughs> generally. It may not happen, but the fact that they're thinking about it um, uh, is, is helpful. Other questions for Dave? I'm curious across the different, you know, CRMs that you've used in different companies. It has the number of seats available really affect. I mean, you kind of mentioned this, but the number of seats available really affected adoption. And you know, should maybe these companies start thinking about uh, adoption over pricing? <laughs> um, yes, I think that the like, for example, the Dell Tech system. It was really designed to have a lot of users sort of in the system to maintain the data that they wanted to make all their, these decisions on. Um, they had go, no go decisions built into the system and they had, you know, all of these, these decision triggers that would sort of do things. And then of course you had date and time frames. you know, when is a project awarded? When's the project going to kick off? When do you expect notice to proceed that we're supposed to all feed into these modules? And that's, a, those are a lot of data points that, you know, three salespeople, aren't necessarily, you needed to have sales involved, you needed to have ops involved, you needed to have finance involved and then do the data checks, you know, okay, you know, is this a million dollar project or a $10,000 project? And cause the number says 10,000. <laughs> and so, you know, you know, that I may not know that it's really a hundred thousand dollar job and not a $10,000 job. I'm just put the number on the piece of paper that I got, or, you know, I read the paper wrong a piece of paper wrong when it got put in and no one bothered to check. And, you know, when someone's screaming that their pipeline looks like, you know, a little light and in that, or, and then, you know, sales credits. I mean, we had brought everything down to, to sales. That first system that I mentioned in 2004, the sales information system um, was a, the gatekeeper. The, the goal of that system was really to, um, to do, two things to track cost of sales because they really, you, you had to get a proposal number, which is what you charged time to for the proposal, which tracked that front end cost, which then when you got booked the project, you could tie the booking the project to it and you could track the life cycle cost from proposal to the end of the project. Um, but they also used it for sales credits. If you had a deductive mod um, on a fixed price job, you had negative sales credits. So the, sa <laughs> the sales people were like, we hate this system. <laughs> I don't want, how do you have negative sales? Um, and so it was, it was terrible in that respect. So, but you know, it, it met the expectations of really looking at those dollars. It was terrible from a sales pipeline. People could see their funnel go in the red. <laughs> so you just had to, you know, make sure that they were aware that this is not reflective of your job. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, uh, I, I, I would love to say that, but it was <laughs> amazed like, like, well, your sales numbers are off this month. And I'm like, I, 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 I didn't tell, it's not, it was operations that had to, <laughs> that didn't do something <laughs> or, or decided that the client decided they wanted to not do part of the project. And I'm like, it doesn't reflect. Yeah. It would be great if leadership understood that didn't reflect in the sales process, but they just saw your sales credit numbers go negative for no reason. So but it just generated a lot of dialogue. Sounds good. Well, it looks like um, we're getting chats about people having to jump to the next 1.30. Yay yep. for Zoom back to back all day, the new culture <laughs> that we live in. And um, I just wanna say thank you to everyone for attending. Um, our next call will be the second Thursday in May. We do have a free um, webinar coming on Tuesday. It is um, CRM for leadership. And then um, we have a, CR, a Cosential specific one the Tuesday after that on, um, oh, it's on my birthday. I guess I'm doing a webinar on my birthday. There you go. So um, spend 420 with me doing uh, co-central for leadership if you'd like so that sign up is available and awesome. it looks like oh Britt is still on um nrc going virtual this year i know all of the conferences going virtual man one day we'll all get to be together one day i'll make it up to alaska 
Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Today it does not seem to be that day. Well, you guys have a great rest of your day. Dave, thanks so much. Um, I will send you the recap that I was taking notes. Um, so you can look over that to make sure that there's no tweaks or anything. And okay. um, I'll send you my slides. Maybe you can get some different perspective okay. on my slide. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, you guys have a good rest of your um, day and we will talk later. Thank you. Bye guys. Bye. Bye-bye.